Hi, this is Dr. Ashton, and in this short video I'll be talking about the basics of an experiment. Some of the topics we'll cover are the definition of an experiment, what an independent variable is, what a dependent variable is, and what operational definitions are. So let's begin with an example. Let's say that a professor gives you a research article and asks you to read it. This research article is about an experiment that claims that children watching violent television programs causes them to act more aggressively. So in order to understand and analyze this experiment the way that we in the psychology department would like you to do, uh, so you need to understand what an independent dependent variable are and also understand the operational definitions in this uh, experiment. So let's take a look at a fuller example of this experiment. 55 year olds were randomly assigned to watch either a violent or a nonviolent uh, television program in a separate classroom in their daycare center. After watching the program, the children were observed while they were engaged in 30 minutes of free play, and this occurred in separate locations. Observers separately watched for aggressive acts and recorded uh, such acts that occurred. Uh, during the 30 minutes of play, children in the experimental condition were observed committing 34 aggressive acts, and children in the control condition were observed committing 23 acts. So, the first thing we need to do is go over the definition of an experiment. And there are three major components to the definition of an experiment. The first is that the researcher manipulates causal factors. The second is that the researcher keeps other con uh, conditions constant. And the third is that there is a means of comparison. We'll go through each one of these presently. First, the experimenter manipulates causal factors. Uh, by manipulation, we mean that the researcher controls which subject receives what type of causal factor being investigated. Usually these causal factors are contained in the independent variable. As I said before, the independent variable is a variable, meaning that this differs from uh, different levels, uh, is a variable uh, that is manipulated by the researcher. Different levels are assigned to different subjects and the independent variable is assumed to be the causal factor. Uh, that is, it's causing some type of behavior. We also break down the independent variable into conditions or levels, and in a very basic experiment you need at least two levels, an experimental uh, condition and a control condition. Our experiment, our example experiment, is a very basic one in which it contains two conditions, a violent and nonviolent cartoon condition, so the experimental condition would be violent cartoons, and the control condition would be nonviolent cartoons. If, when reading an experiment, you have a hard time spotting the independent variable, a spotter's guide would direct you to look for the term groups, or look for the phrase either or, or the words condition or treatments. When an uh, author uses those words, they are usually referring to an independent variable. The second element of an experiment is that the researcher keeps other conditions constant. The experimental and control conditions are treated equally except for the change due to the independent variable. That is, in our example, uh, the independent variable is violent versus nonviolent cartoons, and so everything about the experimental and control conditions should be similar or constant except for the levels of the independent variable. And then finally we need a means of comparison. While we manipulate an independent variable and have two or three or four conditions, we need a way to uh, compare those conditions. We do that through a dependent variable. The dependent variable is the variable assumed to be influenced by the independent variable, and uh, this variable is observed or measured or we get the score from a test that we give our subjects. In this case, in our example, uh, we're observing the children's level of aggression and we're measuring it systematically. If you have a difficult time identifying a dependent variable in an experiment, one easy way to spot it would be to look for the terms measured, observed, or scale. These terms are usually used by authors when they're describing the dependent defined.
In psychology, we use the process of operational definitions to define terms. Uh, violent or nonviolent cartoons could change from one family to another or one person to another. The only way to have some type of systematic and objective way of doing this is through uh, the process of operational definitions. An operational definition is a clearly defined set of procedures for measuring a dependent variable or manipulating an independent variable, uh, the construct of interest. To be a good operational definition, it must specify the procedure precisely enough to allow replication. That is, reading an article, you should be able to replicate or measure that uh, dependent variable the same way the researchers did and get the same results the researchers did. And then also, the relationship between the operational definition and the construct must make sense. This is kind of subjective, but it means that there should be some type of reasonable or logical connection between the uh, constructs such as violent cartoons and the cartoons we're actually watching, or aggressive acts and the, aggre and the acts that we're uh, uh, recording as being aggressive in the experiment. So in this example, for example, the researchers use the, uh, term, the idea of intentionally trying to inflict unwanted harm as the definition of, of violence in the operational definitions for the independent variable. And so in order to control conditions, all factors except for the violence need to be the same across the two levels of the independent variable. So what the researchers did is that they chose two uh, five-minute clips of Dragon Ball Z from the same season because they're trying to minimize the differences between the two conditions as much as possible except for the violence. And so in one uh, clip, we have a five-minute clip involving Goku and Paiku Han's battle, and that's the uh, operational definition of uh, you know, violent. And then we have a five-minute clip of training for the battle. And just to point out, everything must be the same except for the level of violence. And so it's important in the control uh, condition, that is where we're watching a five-minute uh, clip of training for a battle, is that there's just as much motion or activity uh, in uh, the five-minute clip than in the experimental clip. Uh, you couldn't, could not have a clip of characters sitting around talking to each other because then there would be another added difference between the control condition and the experimental condition. So we have to try to keep everything exactly the same between the two conditions except for the independent variable, which in this case is violence. Our operational definition of uh, you know, aggression is based on the idea of any forceful uh, physical contact between the students during their recess. And we further identify specific instances such as poking, grabbing, hitting, kicking, pushing, and shoving. These will automatically be counted as aggression, but any other types of forceful physical contact will also be counted as aggression. And finally, uh, we need to discuss the issue of cause. That is, uh, the idea of the experiment uh, is, based on, is based on the idea that the independent variable causes the dependent variable. And this study claims that children watching violent television causes the children to act more aggressively. Uh, how can we do that through an experiment? Uh, the logic of the experiment is that if the elements of the experiment are met, if the researcher manipulates the independent variable, if all other conditions are held constant, and if there's a systematic and objective means of comparison, then the changes we see in the dependent variable between the conditions should be due to the independent variable and nothing else. And that's because nothing else is changing between these two conditions except the independent variable so logically the only thing that could cause these changes is the independent variable. As long as that is met, 